Welcome back to Hardware Unbox. Just a quick one for you guys today, something I wasn't originally going to make a video on, but after doing some benchmarking in the past week and finding some interesting results, thought it was worth maybe a bit of discussion. So as you might have seen in the title, we're back testing Radeon image sharpening again, but this time on two additional families of GPUs. As we know, Radeon Image Sharpening launched only with support for AMD's new Navi GPU, so the RX 5700 and RX 5700 XT. AMD said that this new feature used specific hardware found in their Navi architecture to accelerate the post-process effect, so presumably running it on older GPUs would either not work or incur a performance penalty. But as was quickly discovered through the reshade port of AMD's contrast adaptive shading algorithm, there was no technical reason this filter couldn't also work on AMD's older GPUs. It just left us with a bit of a performance hit when enabled relative to the less than 1% hit we saw on Navi GPUs. But considering the feature is actually pretty good, I still felt it should be unlocked for all, even if there was a larger performance drop on older architectures. In the past couple of months, AMD has been hard at work getting Radeon image sharpening working on both Polaris and Vega GPUs, unleashing support in a couple of driver updates. In fact, I think the one for Vega 64, which you can see here, was released right at the end of September. So it's been not that long that we've had this feature available uh, for people that own these older GPUs. Now, I thought this wouldn't be too hard to do. You know, you just unlock the feature for these GPUs and mention that it might drop performance a little bit. But AMD has actually gone the extra mile here and optimized Radeon image sharpening for both Polaris and Vega, as we'll see in some of the performance testing in a moment. It's also a good opportunity to discuss how AMD and Nvidia's sharpening techniques stack up against each other now that there's been another big update to this situation. As I covered a few months ago, Nvidia over hold their sharpening filter as part of their freestyle tools, giving it a big boost in image quality and performance. So if you're wondering about which GPU vendor is doing this feature better, well, I'll give my thoughts on that a bit later. For now, let's get into some testing and we'll look at image quality first, or rather I'll show some footage that I took previously while testing because there's no difference here between Radeon image sharpening on Navi and the new support for Polaris and Vega. So if you've seen my previous videos on what Radeon image sharpening looks like and what it does, well, no changes here, and if you haven't seen those videos, well, might be worth having a look. The more interesting stuff comes in performance testing. Standard test rig here, Core i9-19900K with 16GB of DDR4, and I've tested Navi with the Radeon RX 5700 XT, Vega with RX Vega 64, and Polaris with an RX 590. I would have liked to test the Radeon 7 as well, but I don't have one, and I expect results will be similar to what we're about to go through anyway. So let's kick things off with F1 2019 running at 1440p ultra high settings in the DX12 mode. Much to my surprise, not much of a difference in performance between these GPUs with Radeon image sharpening on or off. I did expect to see this with the 5700 XT because in previous testing I saw under a 1% performance loss with the feature enabled. But given what I'd seen from Reshade, I was expecting to see a hit with Vega and Polaris. One game isn't enough of a sample though, let's get into some more testing. Here's the Division 2, 1440p ultra settings, again in the DirectX 12 mode, and yeah, not much of a difference. With these GPUs, we're within the margin of error, so the difference between the modes are less than 0.5 FPS, that's what I'd call pretty negligible. Previously, when testing the Division 2 with the RX 5700 XT, I saw very similar results, but this has also been expanded to Vega and Polaris now by the looks of it. What about Metro Exodus? Yep. This graph looks familiar, no differences between sharpening on and off. I think a bit of a pattern is starting to emerge here, but I just want to quickly check two more games. Gears 5, ah, nice, we finally see a performance difference. Oh wait, it's just a 0.5 FPS improvement with sharpening enabled. False alarm guys, we're still within that margin of error here. And lastly, Resident Evil 2, a game which I think benefits really well from Radeon image sharpening. Once again, we're not seeing a performance difference between the feature on or off, even with Vega and Polaris, so I think after five games, we're getting a pretty good picture here of what's going on, and I'm not going to bore you with any further testing. What I will show, though, is the performance in Resident Evil 2 with Reshade's contrast adaptive sharpening, as opposed to Radeon image sharpening with these three GPUs. We know Reshade CAS essentially looks the same, that's because it's a port of basically what AMD is doing with Radeon Image Sharpening, but across the board, it does have a larger performance impact than Radeon Image Sharpening, which is a bit interesting. On the RX 5700 XT, the performance hit is 
pretty low, less than 1%, which is what we saw originally with radio and image sharpening. But with Vega 64 and the RX 590, we're still looking at a performance hit in the 3 to 4% range when using the reshade port of radio and image sharpening. So quite clearly using AMD's driver feature instead of reshade is a better option for gamers wanting quick and easy sharpening where it's compatible. It also leads me to believe that AMD has done some optimization work here as part of introducing radio and image sharpening to Vega and Polaris, allowing it to perform as well as it does on Navi with these older generation GPUs. Potentially Navi also has seen a slight performance improvement, but it's hard to say given we're talking about such slim margins that fit within our standard margin of error. In any case, this isn't just a straight unlocking of the feature for Polaris and Vega, it's better than that and better than the reshade port in terms of performance. I guess this kind of justifies having to wait for this feature to come to older GPUs. I know a lot of people were complaining that AMD only launched the feature for Navi initially, but given the results where it looks like AMD have put genuine work into making this good on those older GPUs, I think this justifies the wait. How does this compare to NVIDIA's similar sharpening filter found in their freestyle tools? Well, it's clear that they haven't been able to get this technique running as well as AMD on their latest Turing architecture. The new version of freestyle sharpening sees a 3 to 6% performance hit on the RTX 2070 as we saw with previous testing. This is a big improvement over the old filter, but it's not as highly optimized as AMD's offering, at least for now. I don't think that sort of performance hit is too bad personally, given it looks good and it's a similar hit to Reshade, but it is a hit. Maybe NVIDIA can improve this, we'll just have to see. Aside from performance, I think NVIDIA's sharpening tool is much better. One of the key reasons for this is that it has an adjustable strength, unlike AMD's implementation, which is just still a simple on-off toggle. Some games require less sharpening than others, and NVIDIA allows you to tweak things to get it just right. NVIDIA also allows you to apply sharpening on a per-game basis. AMD still doesn't offer this feature. It's a basic global toggle. So. Right there, we still have two issues from the launch of radar image sharpening that remain to this day that NVIDIA have already solved. Better GPU compatibility from AMD is nice, but I guess they've still got a bit of work to do. On top of that, neither implementation has perfect game support. AMD still doesn't support DirectX 11, which leaves out a huge chunk of popular games. Meanwhile, NVIDIA is using a whitelist of games, which does include DirectX 11 titles, but doesn't include every popular game out there. NVIDIA has the edge here, but they'll lose that pretty quickly if AMD launches DirectX 11 support. So anyway, I found that interesting to see that AMD is continuing to work on Radeon image sharpening and are actually making meaningful improvements when they launch support for new GPUs. Neither AMD nor Nvidia have perfect solutions for sharpening right now. We're close, but not quite there. And I think AMD has a lot more work to do than Nvidia still at this stage, but it's a cool feature to have out of the box from both vendors. Next up in the series, we'll be revisiting DLSS on Turing GPUs like uh, this one that I've got here, it's an RTX 2070, as it turns out. Uh, we've had a lot of requests to look into that since NVIDIA revamped their implementation in the game control, but I'm just waiting on the next DLSS title to get released so I can see whether this was a one-off upgrade in that title or whether it looks like being the way forward. It does look reasonably impressive and could be a good option for people who have these RTX GPUs, but we are going to look into that in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Aside from that, yeah, short video as I said, not much more to talk about, so let's wrap it up with the usual stuff. Subscribe for more Hardware Unbox testing, give the video a like if you enjoyed it, consider supporting us on Patreon or through our merch store. We got t-shirts, we got mugs, we got hoodies as well, and yeah, I'll catch you in the next one.